Two stores, four cars, a wife, and three kids. Wealthy sportsman type fella. Well, how about Shannon? That's Shannon over there. Master mechanic, International Motors. No family, few friends, lives alone and hates it. The ripe type. Nice car, Eddie boy, nice car. Boy, she's hot. Hey, the brakes fade on you in the last few laps? It's all right, Eddie. You just didn't have enough automobile, that's all. Little guy, isn't he? So is Napoleon. Well, let's go get a Coke or something, huh? How do you feel, boy? All right, it's all right, it's all right. Are you ready for that? Oh, isn't that lovely, huh? Never bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> Directly for the March Field race. Just saying, it's all filled out. How about some lunch, boy? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Just forget it, huh? I gotta get back to work. You got a half hour yet? You bonehead. What are you guys, this guardian angel or something? What's a sense in riding no. up? Look, just because the little guy's an oddball, don't There's nothing the matter with him. So we don't get with it in the day department. So? Oh, yeah. You wanna rib him? Rib him about cars and they'll rib you right back. Yeah. Do you ever drive against them? Or they make you wish you were back in scooters. Stalling. It wouldn't start this morning. I had to have somebody push it. Well, can you leave it? Well, how long would it take? 
It's hard to say. It's probably just carburation, but we have to check it. Shouldn't take long, though. All right. Was there a mechanic here named Shannon? Eddie Shannon? Yes, ma'am. The man who helped me this morning suggested I bring my car here and have him fix it. Well, if he's not busy, we'll have him check it over. If you'll just step over here and sign an order. Uh, your name, please? Barbara Matthews. And the address? Hollywood Carlton on Orange Drive. Just sign that. Shannon. Shannon. Eddie Shannon. Be right back. On a clear day, you can see Catalina. Check this, Hillman. The lady says it's been stalling on her and she couldn't get it started this morning. She's in a hurry, so see what's wrong and let me know how long it will take you to fix it. Wait a minute. I forgot my purse. Oh. I'm... I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. It's all right. My hands are greasy. No, really, it's all right. But if you want to do me a favor, you can kind of hurry up with the car. I've got an appointment. Yes, ma'am. Well, what do you think, Eddie? Drives like a truck. It'll never be able to corner like it used to with that weight you've got in it. Yeah, she used to corner like a dream. Shannon. Eddie Shannon. Excuse me. 
I'd put back in there what you had in the first place. Hey, Eddie. You know that home you fixed yesterday? The lady just called. Can't get it started. Here's the address. Hollywood Carlton Apartments on Orange Drive, Apartment B. The car's in front. The Hillman? Yeah, the little brown one. You know, the good-looking dame. Name's, uh, Matthews. You fixed the carburetor. Well, it's 11 o'clock. We close at noon on Saturdays, remember? Take the MG and get going. connection here. What does it mean? It means it won't start. Any uh, body been fooling around with this car? Not that I know of. I got some gas yesterday. The man checked the oil. This fits right over on this thing. Couldn't it just have come loose? Could have. I don't think so. It wasn't like that when I fixed it yesterday. Can you fix it? Sure. whatever it was. That won't be anything. Oh, let me give you something. It's all right. Thanks. Oh, I uh, hope you have a good time at the beach. How did you get that scar? Car accident. I just wondered. This car can look interesting on some people. I have one in my leg. Funny, the more sun I get, the more it shows. You don't have much time to get out in the sun, do you? I go to the beach every chance I get. Just above Malibu. Ever been there? It's nice. Thanks again. Bye. Stillman said I could borrow the MG. Oh, look, Phil said something about getting together tonight, play cards or something, huh? Oh, okay. Hey, Phil. Yeah? Whose house? Huh? Tonight, where are we playing? Oh, I don't know. We can play my house. Make it sunset. Good. Hey, look, Eddie, if you got nothing to do, why don't you come home with me? You can watch a ball game, have dinner around six, then go over to Phil's, huh? Well, Ralph, I'd like to, but I've, I've got some things to do. Yeah, like what? Oh, I've just got some things to do. Okay, I'll see you tonight at Phil's, huh? Okay. Right.
What a nice surprise. Mr. Norris, Mr. Shannon, Steve, Eddie. Hi. I'll be taking off. I haven't done the breakfast dishes yet. Nice meeting you, Eddie. Bye, Barbara. See you soon. Friday. Don't you forget. I won't forget. So long. Sit down. Hope I didn't bust anything up here. Steve? No, he's an old friend. He has a house down the beach. Did you bring your trunk? No, I, uh, I just came the way I am. I just drove down. Drove past down by the beach. It's such a nice day. Well, why don't you take off your shirt anyway? The sun feels wonderful. except go to school. Started fooling around with cars when I was 12 or 13. Should have seen the first car I ever owned. Tell me about it. What kind of car was it? Model A. At 103 miles an hour. You made it go 103 miles an hour. What? Huh? What's wrong? Here I've been talking about nothing but cars. Must must be pretty dull. You don't think much of yourself, do you? Why did you follow me down to the beach? Want me to tell you? Like you're interested. Simple as that. followed me because you wanted to see me again. Followed me because I flirted with you a little. What's the matter, Eddie? Don't you like being flirted with? Eddie, I asked you to come down to the beach. Why? Why? Why are you here? Better put your shirt on. You're getting sunburned. Yeah. I, I gotta be going then. Anyway, it's it's getting kind of late. I'm sorry you have to go. Will you call me? Yeah. I, I sure would like to. Hollywood seven one four six six. Bye.
you called. Man, it's been a real dull day. Yeah, real slow. I like it. You like it. Whoa! Hey, Matt! Hold! Wow! Oh, oh Matt, that's oh. the best there is, baby! Oh, no, Matt, that is the love of Eddie! Kiss me! Mm. Man, get a load of that walk! different is dead man dead i am so alive it hurts <laughs> you see that one even bothered shorty you like that one eh, shorty she was good looking dame a good looking dame shorty no 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 that was not a good looking dame i thought she was you pregnant jumped through the window <laughs> look shorty as long as you're finally getting with it you gotta learn that was not a good looking dame that was the Adam Bob. <laughs> a good looking baby. Well, maybe she wasn't his type. Isn't his type. Shorty. Come on, Carl, that's enough. Knock it off. Huh? No, no, it's, it's all right. Go on. What were you going to say? Ah, forget it. No, I want to hear what you got to say. What was it? Shorty, that is not your type? No. I'd say she's more your type. The kind you yell at through a window. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you could do better. Special. Anything would taste good to you after all those hash joints you've been eating in. How'd you happen to buy these? Saw them on a newsstand. Anything you want to know about sports car racing, just ask me. Don't you get enough of that from me? It's a big part of your life. I'm interested. I'll take these into the kitchen. Wait a minute. You look like you want to stay for a while. What are we going to do about these dishes? Don't okay. worry about it. The maid comes in in the morning. Gee, that... Sure was swell. How do you how do you make that spaghetti? I wish I could take the credit for it and just boil the spaghetti and heat it up the meat sauce. I get everything at a little Italian market on Santa Monica. Eddie. Do you like being a mechanic? Sure. Don't you ever want to do anything else? I don't know how to do anything else. But you like to race. Oh, well, yeah, but cars, motors, racing, it's all the same thing. It's all thrown in together. But I've been reading in these magazines about those professional drivers, the ones who race in Europe. The scary, Tarufi. Rosier, yeah, you know, all the world's best drivers. But there was one that topped them all. I don't know whether I find him in this magazine or not. He's been dead for a little while. Nuevo Larry. He was a king. I used to call him the flying madman. He was just a little guy, too, about five feet four. He was the best, huh? Yeah, by far. I'm not saying that I'd ever be as good as he was, but I'd give anything to drive in those great races. Grand Prix, Le Mans, Silverstone, racing them all. That's not being just a mechanic. Well, you've got to be a great mechanic, too. You can't just go over to Europe and drive in those races. Why not? Well, Europe is a long way off for a guy like me. But it sounds so wonderful. I don't know much about the Grand Prix or whatever it's called, but... They're the real races. You've got to be a great driver just to finish in them at all, even if it's last place. And you've got to have a great car, too. It sounds so exciting. It is. Gosh, if it ever happens... In the meantime, I'll just drive in the races around here, getting the experience I can. Who knows, someday I might be right, save up enough money and get to Europe. Next time there's a race, can I come? Sure. In fact, there's going to be one next oh, month, the 15th at March Field. I've never been to a race before. I bet it's fun. Hello? Oh, hello. How are you? No, not at all. No, I haven't been down since Saturday. Well, thank you. I just might take you up on that. What? <laughs> oh, no, of course not. I wouldn't miss it for the world. 
Sure, very nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> Steve Norris. Remember you met him at the beach? Yeah. He asked me to come to a party Friday night. As well. Will you take me? Sure. I'd, I'd like to. Surprise! Thanks. Who did I make this for? Harold, are you in the habit of serving empty glasses? Marge, for you, I have a special witch's brew. What's it cooking out there? It smells wonderful. Strong enough. <laughs> Steve? Steve? You need any help? No, thanks. Doing fine. Doing fine. Oops. <laughs> Would you like a little drink? Uh, just pay your respects to the chef and leave. He is temperamental. There must be something I can do. Honest, make. honest. Too many cooks louse up the stroganoff. No, but I could be of some help. Could I peel this onion? I can't stand to see a grown man cry. Take it with you, beautiful. Drop it into a large martini. Well, nice catch. I used to cook for the White Sox. Out, out, brief candle. I hope the sour cream curdles. How's he doing? Better than I am. <laughs> Well, greetings. Oh, Hi, Barbara. Harold. This is Eddie Shannon. This is Harold Bates. Eddie, how are you? Nice to meet you. Come on in, meet the Motley yeah. crew. Attention, everyone. Lovely one is Barbara. Lucky oh, one is Eddie. Nice. Nice. She's in the kitchen. I'll tell you here. All right. Hi, honey. Thank you. Hello, Hello Eddie, I'd like you to meet Mary. Well, Hello, Eddie. How are you doing? Eddie. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Would you like some more herbs or something? How you and little Speed King getting along? He's awfully nice, Harold. I'm glad for you. The wooing of Huckleberry Finn. Well, then what exactly would you say is the basic difference between an American car and a foreign car? A sports car, I mean. Well, there's a lot of difference. Jeez. The uh, American cars are built more for comfort rather than speed, and the foreign cars are built more for handling, and they, they corner better. Corner? Yeah, they can be. They can take the corners faster. <laughs> well, can't you go around fast enough with an American car? Yeah, sure, but uh, well, it's it's what the car does as you're cornering. It's how it acts. Let's say that you're out on the highway and you're going oh 60 to 70 miles an hour. And not a policeman in sight. Madam, we were discussing the merits of the foreign car. <laughs> Don't you kid me? You were speeding. Go ahead, Eddie. Yeah, go ahead. Well, uh. Go ahead. <laughs> Suppose you're, suppose you're doing 60 or 70 miles an hour. <laughs> You'd get a ticket. <laughs> dear love. Yes, dear love. Why don't you go somewhere and pass out like a lady? Because ladies just don't pass out. Oh, when they're drunk, they do. I hope. Mr. Whatever your name is, I apologize for the untimely interruption, and I do hope you'll forgive me. Well, it's all right. Is it? Sure. Is it? You've been a doll. It is. And I have been a doll. I have been a living doll. The, uh, the car... Save it. Save it, Eddie. <laughs> Where are you taking him? To my den. Your boy's got me interested in sports cars. Leave a little for me. He's all yours in 15 minutes. Okay. Ooh, man. Get a load of that mess. How long have you known Barbara, Eddie? About a week now. She's a wonderful girl. We met in New York. Excuse me. New York, your home? Yep. I'm planning on going back in about a month. Been fun here. Met a lot of new friends. All the people you see in the other room. Eddie, you have no idea how many friends you can make on the beach. Especially if you happen to be renting a beach house. I guess so. Getting back to sports car racing. Let's say that you had to race an American car in a road race. Would it be practical? Not unless it was light and you modified it. What do you mean? Make it go faster? Well, not only that, but you'd have to work over the suspension and the steering. You'd have to do a lot of things to it. But you could do it. You had to. Hey! 
feel rejected. Has it been 15 minutes? No, but you've had it long enough. Eddie, I suspect that racing is only one of a long list of your accomplishments. <laughs> it's all yours, Miss Matthews. Hi. You certainly are. What's the matter with her? She's just mad because I wouldn't let her do the dishes. I've been saving them for you, beautiful. Oh, Wonderful time. I had a nice time. I had a good time, too. I think Steve's as well, Father. He likes you. He's the kind of person who can do you a lot of good. What do you mean? He's a very smart businessman. How could he help me? I don't know. Maybe he can get you started in something else. Make you some money. <laughs> I don't think he likes me that much. <laughs> It's not being very smart, is it? It's not very nice. You're right. I'm sorry. It's not very nice. Oh, come on now, Pumpkin. Don't be mad. Another week or two and it'll be all over. What's the matter? Nothing. I'm just tired, I guess. What is the matter? I feel sorry for him. Terribly sorry for yeah, him. Yeah, sure you do. Steve, let's call the whole thing off. Please, you don't know what it's like. Honey, he, he's not like other people. He's, he's like a lonesome little animal. He's never had any love in his whole life. It's too late. He's in love with you, isn't he? It's a love that, it's a devotion, a kind of terrible worship. All right, what happens when he finds out about us? That's what I mean. You just can't tell about a little guy like this. Well, even if we did forget about it, he's still got to find out. Yes, but maybe I could make it easier. How? By letting him drag out his big love affair. Now, it all adds up to the same thing. One way or another, he's got to find out, so? Yes, but at least he won't have to know how he's been used. He'll think that there was some attraction that I just got over it, like people do. He's hooked. And when a little ugly guy like that gets hooked, he gets hooked deep. The damage is done. So is it better to drag it out and watch him suffer, or hit him in the face with it and let him hate you all at once? Any way you look at it, it's a rotten deal for him. Pumpkin, remember the prize. That is not a rotten deal. 
And then he can buy himself a car and race his head off. Oh, I don't know. Everything seems to be out of shape, soiled. I, I feel like I want to wash everything out and start all over, clean and new. That's the way it's going to be, Pumpkin. Clean and new. Yeah, he works half day today. He'll be down around 1 o'clock. I can hardly wait. Listen, you be a good boy around our Mr. Shannon, or I will bury you in the sand. Oh, I'll be nice as spy. Gee, if this works out, maybe we can all room together next semester. already? No, it's uh, just a little after 10.30. Uh, I didn't mean to wake you up, but uh, Steve Norris just called me. You're going, aren't you? Well, certainly, I think you should. Yeah, I, I will. Stop by on your way back. <laughs> Goodbye. Hi, Eddie. Mr. Norris. Glad you could make it. Thanks. Come on in, relax. Thanks. Sit down. Did you bring a bathing suit? No, I didn't. Oh, that's all right. We got a couple extra ones around here if you feel like taking a swim. Thanks. Yeah, I sure liked that party the other night. Good. Glad to hear it. How about a drink? No, thank you. I don't care for one. Coke? Beer? No. Oh, I will have a Coke if you have one. Sure. Around. Great day, isn't it? Yeah, this is nice out. How's the girlfriend, Eddie? Barbara? Oh, yeah. she's fine. In fact, I, I talked to her just before I came down here. You did? Eddie. I could have gotten that. Tut, tut, tut. Only man alive who holds a Gunga Din scholarship. He makes the jokes. <laughs> Eddie, Barbara tells me that you want to go to Europe. Race at Le Mans and uh, Le Grand Prix. Did she tell you that? Yeah. She said you want to be a big-time race driver. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd, I'd like to try. Well, uh, how would you do it? Would you race your own car? Well, it's if I could get up and enough money to buy one. Mmm, money, money, money. <laughs> it's the old problem, isn't it? How much would it cost? Well, I don't think I could ever get enough money to buy one of the big ones. If I was lucky, I could save up enough to get something under 1500 class. But even those cars cost a lot of money. Oh, like what? Four or five thousand, then I'd have to work it over a little bit and get it in shape. Yeah, and of course you'd have to pay to ship it over there and your living expenses right. while you were there. That's right. In other words, if you had about fifteen thousand dollars, you might be able to race at Le Mans next year, huh? Fifteen thousand? <laughs> That'd really be the thrill, wouldn't it? That's putting it mildly. Yes, sir. Get the map, will you? Eddie, I have got a business proposition for you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see what you think about it. Now, this is something that I'm very interested in, to put it mildly. Anything else? I could go down to the store and stock up on canned goods. At ease. Ah, here. Yeah, here we are, Eddie. Shh. This is us sitting out the beach of Santa Monica. Now, over here is Palm Springs. You ever been there? Mm -hmm. In fact, I raced there last year. Good, then you probably know this road. It's a back road running from the Springs down to San Diego Highway. 
Yeah, I think I remember it. I don't know too much about it, though. Eddie, this is a big proposition. I got the idea one weekend when I first came out here. I went down to Springs, and we've been planning it ever since. And, well, it won't work without you. Without me? That's right. Eddie, this road is 19 and 1 16th miles long, and it's less than a great road. It's got some bad turns on it, and the surface isn't too good. I think that a good driver could probably make it in, well, 35 to 40 minutes. But even then, he'd have trouble on the turns. Now, I think that somebody like you, a really great driver... Oh, wait a minute. No, I mean it, Eddie. I mean it. I think that you could make it in 20 minutes. Well, I don't know. Maybe I could. I'd have to drive the road first and see what kind of condition it was in. I don't know. Why? Eddie, we've got to get from here to here in no more than 22 minutes, less if possible. Now, if you can do that, you've got $15,000. You'd give me 15000 just to drive that road in 22 minutes or less? Gosh, uh, wait, let me get this straight. Well, why do you have to make it in that time? Because at exactly 828, the people who work in the Palm Springs Bank will discover that it's been robbed. There'll be a moment of silence while Mr. Shannon checks the battery on his hearing aid. You're kidding me. Hmm? Not a bit. You're gonna rob a bank? You want, you want me to drive the car? Oh, you're just... You're joking, huh? Just having some fun with me? Eddie, I just want you to drive the car for $15,000. Rob a bank, you're crazy. Your proposition doesn't appeal to Mr. Shannon's finer sensibilities. I'm gonna get out of here. Eddie, before you take off, Eddie, uh, just one little suggestion. Please no, believe no. me. I, before I, you make up your mind, criminal. Eddie. I made before, up my mind, Mr. Eddie, before you make up your mind, have a little talk with Barbara. What has she got to do with it? Just have a talk with her, but keep it in the family. Good afternoon, Mr. Shannon. was one of the sweetest kids I've ever met. I hope we haven't made a mistake. What did you tell him? What did I tell him? He told me he was going to rob a bank. He wants me to drive the car for him. I told him no. But he said before I made up my mind to be sure and talk to you. Why? Eddie, look, I've known Steve Norris for a long time. He told me that. He knows all about you, about your plans, about the things you want to do someday. But he told me to talk to you first. What did he mean? I guess he thought it might make a difference. What difference? He knows what I want. Eddie, you don't know me very well. It's been such a short time. We, we've had a, a lot of fun, but you really don't know me. What have I got to know? I guess now you have to know that Steve's proposition does make a difference. He knew it would. I guess in his own funny way, he thought he was doing me a favor. A favor? Eddie, look, this isn't the end of the world. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. What do you want me to do? That's up to you to decide. You want me to do it? Oh, Eddie, not if it'll make you unhappy. Look, a guy is going to rob a bank. He wants me to drive the car for him. That's going to make me very happy. But it doesn't bother you, does it? Now, you want me to do it, don't you? Why? What for? Have you got $15,000? Oh, no, I haven't got $15,000, but I'm, I'm not a criminal. Will you ever have $15,000? Someday. Someday. Maybe I'll have it. Eddie, sit down and listen to me. I want to tell you once, and I hope you understand. I'd like things to be right for us. I'd like you to go to Europe and, and, and drive in those races and get everything you want out of life. That would make me very happy. You don't want to be just a mechanic, and I don't want you to be. Steve made you a proposition. To you, it's terrible. It's, it's breaking the law. Well, it, it, sure, it's breaking the law, and maybe it's terrible, but I can think of things a whole lot worse. But, Barbara, you don't Let want me to Let me finish, do... Eddie. Things have never been very easy for me. I learned a long time ago to take things as they come. If they work out, well, fine. You want something, and so do I. But there's a, a, a difference between us. You're willing to, to wait and, and hope that maybe someday you'll get what you want. Well, I can't wait. I know what happens when people wait. You... you knew all about this, didn't you? Yes. Steve told me he was going to ask you. You knew all about Steve, too. That's why you took me to the party. I won't do it.
that's the end of it, huh? Yes, Eddie? Is it important? No, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'm going to be busy. No, it's not that. It's just that, well, under the circumstances, I don't think it'd be a very good idea. I, I, I'd like to see you. I'd like to see you, too, but we just don't seem to... No, Eddie. I'm sorry. The guy with the Maserati's back. My what? name is Eddie. Ah, oh, come on, Shorty. <laughs> what happened? I don't know, but whether you like him or not, he's gonna get his face pushed in if he's not careful. Eddie? Can I come in? Now we turn on to the main highway. It's approximately one sixteenth of a mile until we reach the old road that leads to the mine. And here comes the turnoff. It's going to be hard to see until you're almost right on top of it. But like I said, it's only one sixteenth of a mile to the Palm Canyon turnoff. We didn't take any pictures of the old road leading up to the mine. It's practically straight all the way, right to the mine. Our car will be parked at the mine. We'll leave it there. We'll take the other car into Palm Springs. Other car? You said if you had to drive an American car in a road race, you'd need something light? Oh, that's right. Come on. Gonna use this? I picked it out personally with loving care. It'll certainly be inconspicuous. You'll never get over that road in this in 20 minutes, no matter who's driving. Not even if you modify it, hop up the engine. You'd have to do a lot of work on it to drive that road in that time. You'll have to average 60 miles an hour. Better to be on the safe side. I figure you'll have to do at least 100 on the straightaways. That's up to you. Carol will get you anything you need. Just give him a list. Oh, and you'll keep your job. Continue to work there during the day. After work, Harold will pick you up at the corner of Orange Drive in Franklin. He'll bring you out here. You can put in about four hours a night here until the car is done. That'll bring you back to your rooming house each night around 11.30. How long have I got? No rush. This isn't something we have to do tomorrow. I want you to do the best job you know how. If anything goes wrong, we won't be able to stop and fix it. <laughs> Oh, and Eddie. I don't think that you'd better see Barbara until after this is over. What do you mean? I don't want to take any chances. If anything went wrong, you wouldn't want her mixed up in this, would you?
How many times can you look at this? Movies must be better than ever. Hey, looky, I brought you some popcorn. Sounds great. Come on, I've got some more pictures to show you. Give us a drink, will you, Harold? All right. <laughs> that was one of the best dives I've ever made. What do you want, Coke? Yeah, that's fine. You want the same thing? Excuse <coughs> <coughs> Remember this doll? Ah, can I ever forget it? This stuff was some shots we took, you know, around the hotel, just a couple of average vacationers with a camera. <coughs> Who's operating that camera, Harold? Yeah, that was me. I think that was a yeah. pretty good job. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good guy. Oh, he's quite a sportsman. Is yeah. it cold down there? No, no. Beautiful. Hey, take this. Hello, hey, girl. Hey, 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 hey. Give the man his drink. Here. <laughs> This was a real problem, Eddie. I couldn't get my light meter working. Ah, uh, this is early in the morning. That's Monte Vista Drive. Now watch, watch. That man coming out there, he's the chief teller at the bank. He leaves his house every morning at exactly 7.50. He drives to the bank. He arrives 20 minutes before the rest of the employees and opens up. Why did you pick the Palm Springs Bank? Because it's never been robbed and it's a setup. There's money in it. Now, it's all very simple. You and I will be waiting about a half a block down the street from the teller's house. Harold will be waiting to meet the teller when he comes out to his car. When they leave, we follow. Can't possibly miss, unless something goes wrong. Nothing's going wrong. Now, the teller opens the bank at 8.05. At 8.10, the vault opens. Harold's got five minutes in which to get the money. If I don't make it in five, we're going on overtime. That gives us 13 minutes before the rest of the employees arrive and discover there's been a robbery. By the time they notify the police and the highway patrol sets up roadblocks here, 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 and here, we'll have had 22 minutes to have traveled from here to here and be well on our way to the old mine turnoff. How do you know that the police will set up roadblocks right there? I asked the policeman. Oh, cross my heart. Now. There is another problem. The distance through the town to the old Palm Canyon Road is a mile and an eighth. Observing the speed limit, it's going to take us three minutes to travel that mile and an eighth. Horse named Nor did it in 146.4. There weren't any stop signs. That leaves us 18 minutes to travel 19 miles of pretty lousy road. But if we do it, we will have gotten to this point here a full minute before the police can arrive there to set up a roadblock. Isn't that cutting it kind of thin? The faster you drive, the safer we'll be. Why don't we rent a cannon and shoot ourselves back to Los Angeles? Now, after we get rid of the old car. How? We'll drive the car into the old mine and block up the entrance. And we'll all wear old clothes. I can hear the police calls now. Be on the lookout for three scarecrows. Why don't you give your mouth a rest for a few minutes? I think I'll make it numb with alcohol. Eddie, we'll have a change of clothes at the mine. After we stash the car, We'll go back onto the highway, turn southwest on the Anza Highway to San Diego, and return to L.A. by the coast route. And we'll bury the plunder, raise the Jolly Roger, and sail off to Tartugas. Yo-ho-ho, -ho, and a bottle of rum. All right, Eddie, you better get some rest. Harold, meet you tomorrow night at 8, the usual place. Drive him home, Harold. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, and Eddie, you better tell him down at the garage that you won't be in on Wednesday. Get a toothache in the afternoon. If they call to see how you are the next day, well, you can always say you were at the dentist. But don't forget and tell them you were out robbing a bank. Get a good night's sleep. Eddie, I thought Steve told you I just to had to see you. Glad I didn't wake you up. I was just cleaning the apartment. The bedroom's a mess. What's the matter? I just wanted to see you. I uh, 
we're, we're gonna leave tomorrow. I just wanted to talk to you. I just can't get used to the whole thing. I, I guess I never will be able to. I, I wasn't gonna come by and then I just had to. It's not that I'm gonna walk out on you or anything like that. It's, it's too much money, but everything is important, isn't it? The, the money and everything. whole thing's up to me. It's, it's, it's really very simple. All I have to do is, is drive that car better than I've ever driven any car in my life. It's a tough road. I'm gonna have to really barrel. It's all up to me. I'll have to be about as good as any driver there is, even as good as those drivers in the magazine. Who knows, maybe I'm ready for Le Mans now and don't know it. Eddie, look. I know I've said a lot of things, but maybe it's a mistake. You mean, you don't think I should? Well, it's not that I don't think you should do it. It's just that, don't go through with it just for me. Do it for yourself, for, for the money and the things it can get for you. But I want what you want. Money like that doesn't mean anything to me unless... I want you to do what you want to do. I told you how I feel about it, but if it makes you unhappy, then forget it. Look, I didn't force you into this. You could have backed out any time, and, and that would have been that. I, I, I didn't mean to get you upset. I'm sorry, too. I, I guess nobody would be particularly calm under the circumstances. Sure. You look tired. I am. I'm a little tired. I've been working so hard, you know, I've been sleeping very good. When are you leaving? Eight o'clock tomorrow night. Oh. i got to go in tomorrow and, and tell them that i got a toothache or something so I can get off Wednesday. I never had a toothache in my life. <laughs> Not even a filling. You better get some sleep, Eddie. Yeah, you better too. You, you look tired. I miss seeing you. Eddie, I... Now, look, after Wednesday, it'll be all right. We're both just a little on edge. Yeah. I'll call you when I get back. Remember, don't worry. It, it's gonna be all right. and I'll blow your brains out. scavenger hunt, and I'm supposed to get all the money out of the bank. <laughs> That's Dad. He says I'm too young to drive yet.
Suitcase full of money for a cigarette. For a minute behind schedule, you can drive a little faster through town. I'm doing 25 right now. Do 30.
hidden in the car owned by James R. Snyder, chief teller at the bank. Snyder was forced at gunpoint to drive to the bank where the bandits filled a large bag with the money, bound and gagged Snyder, and left him lying behind the teller's window. One of the employees discovered him some 20 minutes later. Snyder told authorities the holdup men escaped in an old Ford sedan that followed them to the bank from his home. An all-out search is underway for the holdup car. In Washington... Plane ticket. Eleven o'clock flight. It'll only be a week. I've got to say goodbye to people. What is it? Steve, it's not the way it should be. The midget. That's unkind. Forget about him. Think about the sixty-seven thousand dollars worth of fun we're gonna have. I can't forget about him. Look, Punkin, it's over and done with. There's nothing you can do about it now. I could see him. I could tell him I'm sorry. Sorry for him or yourself? Both. And I'm a little frightened, too. Steve, people get paid back when they do oh, things on, like this. Come on, come on, come on. No, come whether on. you think so or not, I think they do. You don't know what we've done to that little guy. Do you think telling him is going to help? It might. Confession is good for the soul, huh? I don't know. I think maybe it is. No, he's never going to find out. You're forgetting one thing, Pumpkin. If you ever told him, he just might go to the police. Oh, no, he wouldn't, Steve. I know he wouldn't. You just keep on being pretty. In a week's time, I'll be knocking on your door again. And we'll have everything we ever wanted. Nice and clean and new. Never kiss me like that again. Get in the bedroom and stay in there. Well, Eddie, I told you to stay away from here. Maybe you thought the Grunion were running. Have you seen Barbara? Oh, I haven't, Eddie. Why? Well, I went over to her apartment, and the landlady said that she moved away. So she moved, Eddie. People do that sometimes. She wouldn't do a thing like that, though. She'd leave a message of some kind. You were out robbing a bank, remember? Now, look, Eddie. Eddie, mm -hmm. I told you to stay away from here, and I mean it. I don't want any of us seen together until this thing cools off. Well, if you, if you see her, You'll tell her that... If I see her, Eddie, I'll tell her to get in touch with you. That's right. And you better take off. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. How'd you get here? Cab. Drive him home. No, if he this doesn't. keeps up, we'll have to I can stall him. a meter. Eddie. Barbara. Eddie. Steve told me that you've got to know something. Well, I... Uh, your landlady said that you moved away. I know. I came down here. I'm supposed to be on the 11 o'clock plane for New York. New York? Eddie... There's no way to say this, so it won't hurt. Maybe if I hum hearts and flowers. You shut up. No, let her say it. This whole thing was planned from the very beginning. We were all in this together, just one big happy family. A little broke, but we didn't worry about that. We just stick up a bank. Really wasn't anything to it. All we needed was someone to drive the car. We had to make sure to get the right person. These two noble specimens picked you. The rest was up to me. Do you hear what I'm saying, Eddie? We couldn't take any chances with you. We had to make sure we had to hook you and hook you good, and I was just the little girl for the job. He said it was going to hurt. I'm sorry, Eddie. I'm so sorry I'm sick. What she's trying to say is you've been had, Mr. Shannon. Yes, you tell him. You say it in your nasty, foul little way. You heard him, Eddie. Any way it comes out, that's it. You were never supposed to see me again. You were just supposed to go home and count your $15,000 and pretend like I never happened. Okay. You've said enough. Don't we make a lovely couple? 
And we're going to be married after this and have everything we want. Mr. and Mrs. Steve Norris. Anything in the world for a buck. Eddie, I don't love you. I never did. Steve! You killed him. You killed him when you walked into this room. All right, Harold, get him out of here. Come on. Let's go. No, Steve, no, you can't kill him! Steve, no! 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 Oh. You stupid little fool. No, please, Steve, don't you can't! I can't do anything else! Shut up, shut up, shut up! Please! Shut up! Now, listen to me. Listen to me, I tried to tell you. I told him if he ever found out, he might go to the police. No, he won't. He won't go to the police. He would have. No. He would have. He could have taken a brush off, but he can't be made a fool of. He's tired of being a fool. Start it. We're gonna take a slow ride down the highway. If you go over 40, I'm gonna get unhappy. I'll back it out. Busy day. Tell me something, Shannon. I've always wondered what goes through people's minds in a spot like this. No views on the subject, huh? Come now, Shannon. You must be thinking about dying. He's had it. I don't think he was driving. Well, what happened to the driver? Probably walked away from it. Yeah. Yeah, lucky. Yeah, he walked away, but I bet he wasn't feeling too good. He's hurt all right. Car is registered to a Stephen B. Norris, 24742 Malibu Road. That's not far, about a mile down the road. 
but I'll be trying to make it to his house. I think we better get down there. We'll call in and get the wagon up here. We'll have one of the other units get up there and check the address. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 